uterine fibroids is classified according to their location into the uterus and its relation to the mucosa or the serosa of the uterus. When the myoma is attached by a pedicle with all myoma is bulging into the cavity is type 0. When more than 50% of the myoma bulging into the cavity with less intramural part is type 1. With more deep myoma with more than 50% deep intramyometer is type 2. Type 3 and type 4 are both intramural. Type 3 is intramural touching the mucosa. Type 4 is away from the mucosa near the serosa. When bulge less than 50% out of the serosa is type 5. With more than 50% bulge out of the serosa is type 6. And when the myoma is pedunculated subserous is type 7. So these are the classification of fibroid according to the FIGO. Depends on the geographical location and its relation to the serosa and the mucosa. But sometimes we meet a case of myoma bulging from the serosa and the mucosa is type 2 to type 5. That's an imaging showing MRI and ultrasound showing a type 0 or type 1 submucous fibroid. Let's understand and learn how to do safe and perfect myoma resection. This is a type 1 submucous fibroid. You see most of the myoma mass bulging into the cavity of the uterus, but still there is little, less than 50%, I can say 20% uh, of the myoma is deep intramyometer. The challenge in this kind of the myoma, the more bulging into the cavity is uh, more accessible for resection. However, it occupy the surface area or the cavity of the uterus, leaving less space for the surgeon to move around. So you are working in an awkward location. So let's understand. The more bulge submucus into the cavity is uh, easier to resect, but and it, it more accessible, but less restricted space to work in. More deep, more deep intramyometrial myoma leaves you more space into the cavity, but it is difficult access because it's deep intramyometrial. So please watch, observe carefully the movement of the electrode. You push the electrode forward using the working element and then pull the electrode backwards more towards uh, the cervix very slowly. And again, I highlight, you can see, this is the real time video and the procedure completed in less than seven minutes. However, the surgeon is working very slowly. So speed here doesn't mean that you are moving your hand quickly in a hasteness, uh, fast movement, no. The speed in hysteroscopic surgery means to minimize the time and avoid going in and out every time when you lose the pressure and cavity collapse and you go in again, you, the visibility is very bad. So myoma resection is not just cut. It's not, it's not just to learn how to move the electrode. It is a strategy. And you learn the strategy from watching now. I started from the lowest inferior part of the myoma and then climb up. And then moving sometimes from up and down to flatten the myoma uh, mass. It's a, a little bit uh, shaky because it is type 1. I mean, most of the myoma mass inside the cavity with a pedicle uh, only 20% deep intramyometrial. The art of myoma resection is not only in cutting, but in how to deal with this uh, uh, cut chips which uh, sometimes make the cavity crowded. So how to deal with them and move them, push them to one side and keep on working is by using the electrode to push it to one side, also to direct the tip of the uh, resectoscope and use the fluid jet to push this cut piece to one side, like I'm doing now, push it to one side and keep working. This, what does it mean? Speed and fast in hysteroscopy is to minimize the time. Uh, time is important because of the worry of fluid absorption. Let me stop and show you here. I changed my strategy now to cut, to cut exactly in the middle bisecting the myoma into two halves this is one half and using the backward movement with avulsion and detachment now it's fully detached and then move to the other half again 
Fluid absorption leading to hypervolemia and electrolyte imbalance is the greatest risk in hysteroscopy. In a case like this, the surface area of absorption is very minimal, so there is no worry. But with the big uh, myoma base like type 2 or type 3, here the absorption is higher. And uh, now when the base of the myoma is exposed, you expect some more little absorption than in the start. Again, I'm trying backhand movement in this part, but apparently I was deceived. I thought it's a small pedicle, but apparently it is a broad pedicle. And there is, as I said, like 10 to 20% deep intramural part. Again, push the cut piece to one side. I'm trying now here the back backward back uh, backward movement but it doesn't work well then this trick i'm doing now is called necktie that you bypass the pedicle jump above the pedicle and then try to cut moving from kefald caudal backhand movement is caudal kefald i tried both ways to detach the remaining part of the pedicle so i will leave you to enjoy till the final step when the myoma is totally detached uh, from its attachment. This is the back, this is the, sorry, the necktie movement, trying to cut the, again. This is the last part of the attachment of the fibroid. Uh, the cavity is crowded with the chips and cut pieces, but now myoma is totally detached. Push all this debris to one side and enjoy the pleasure of the fantastic view of the base of the myoma with clean myometrium, then very fine potato chips cuts to flatten the base and enjoy a final nice view. So my dear friends, this is the technique of myoma resection, non-edited, so you can live the situation, you can see step by step, moment by moment, how to do. My dear Histropedia members, I wish you good luck. This is Osama Shauki. Thank you. Thank you very much.